Well, welcome everybody. You'll notice we're high above the ground, specifically at 24,000 feet. Now you might ask, where though? Where are we? Well, I skipped part one today uh, of our departure from Spokane, but we are flying into Dullas. Hey, right when I said we're flying into Dulles, you heard the caution TFR head, uh, the uh, temporary flight restriction, which is really a permanent flight restriction in the Washington, D.C. area. And, uh, started our takeoff roll three hours and 45 minutes ago. Been a nice flight. Transcontinental. Had a big patch today. I installed that, hoping I'd see the end of the oscillation roll, among other things. But we still have the oscillation roll, as you can see not as pronounced, but still there, and it has been pronounced. I don't know what, what the problem is, but it's still there. But these are the ultimate first world problems. I'm gonna turn off our bank limiter, getting ready to make a left turn here as we descend into the Washington area. Plan is to land at runway 01C, 01 center. Let's go ahead and set our ILS frequency for that runway. which happens to be 111.3. I know this from the approach plates I got off my ForeFlight app, the FAA approach plates. There's a VOR at Dulles, 113.5. Enter that. Yeah, those are set. Go ahead and set bearing two to nav two and see if we have any. We do, good, we do have uh, VOR information coming from Dulles. There's that left turn I was just mentioning. Beautiful day in Washington, or in the Washington area. You might be asking, why are you going to Washington? Well, why wouldn't you want to? Isn't Washington the perfect place to go these days? <laughs> it's January 10th, Sunday. One of the reasons I did the transcontinental flight I've got a little more time on a Sunday afternoon. 12.45 here on the West Coast, but uh, should be on the ground here in oh, 15, 20 minutes. I think my estimated arrival time was 4 p.m. Washington time. You may also notice the return of ATC. Yes, yes. I'm like a domestic violence victim. The patch claimed that certain issues on the ATC have been addressed. Specifically, there was a specific reference to that issue. Start slowing, by the way. Let's slow down to 285. To that issue about how I'm not told to descend until I'm on top of the goddamn airport, which is a big problem, obviously. They made a reference to that having been addressed. So I figured we'd test it out and see if it is. Right now, we have been ordered to descend properly when we should have been. 60 miles out, 60 miles out. Theoretically, we want to be at 18,000 feet. We're clear down to 19,000, however, so let's wait. There it is. Down to 9,000, says the Free Bravo Whiskey. Damn it. 9,000 on the altitude selector. Give you an idea of our approach. Here's the Potomac. Uh, here's our approach, just in case you're curious. A lot of planes, a lot of real air traffic, but also a lot of simmers out uh, work, working flying today on the uh, East Coast. Anyway, we're going to head south from Tweak, T-W-E-A-K. Turn around, make a U-turn, head north. Obviously, we're landing at runway 01, which is, is due north. Lucy, L-U-S-I-E. At Lucy, we need to be at uh, 5,000 feet, so I assume we'll eventually get cleared down to 5,000. It's 4.2 miles from Lucy to Pepper. The Pepper will be at 3,900 feet. Hold on. Just like I said. 
by Lucy Transition, just like I said. Okay, good. Excellent. That's great. Continue slowing. Okay, so right now ATC's working great. Um, what did Betty say was the nearest altimeter? 3024, I believe that is exactly what she said. I'll have to check the video later. Weather, as I said, in Washington's nice today. 46 degrees, clear skies, sunny skies, as you can see. Winds are out of the north-northwest at 9 miles an hour at the airport. At least they are in real life. We'll see if they are in the sim. There's all these TFRs in the Washington area, as you can imagine. One of these days I'll have to fly into Reagan. There's another airplane. Appears to be on the same track as we. Let's look outside. Here they are. They're lower than we are, but they're uh, flying a similar track. A couple thousand feet below us. Anyway, here's our approach. So from Lucy to Pepper is 4.2 miles. With Lucy, we want to be at 5,000 feet. At Pepper, we want to be at 3,900 feet. From Pepper to Cary is 3.5 nautical miles. At Cary, we want to be at 2,900 feet. And then from Cary to the airport is eight miles. There's skins, there's skins. Actually, from Cary to skins, is 1.9 miles and from skins to the airport is 6.1 but it's a nice long final from Lucy to the airport is hold on 5 6 7 7.7 8.7 9.9.6 .9 15 mile final more than a 15 mile final which is fine by me I like long final approaches they they give you time to get shit done. There's DC out there. There's Reagan. Probably not going to see that on the video, but you just make it out. And if we were closer, we could actually see some of these monuments that are all nicely modeled in the sim. Jefferson Memorial, the Capitol. Twenty-eight five two five. Set the whiskey. Good day. One two eight decimal five two. Continue slowly. Got to be below two five zero. Knots indicated airspeed. Or below ten thousand feet. Look good right now, though, in terms of our uh, approach. Setting two five zero knots indicated. It's kind of neat to see the city. I'm so happy to be able to do an approach during the day. And Washington is obviously loaded with uh, scenery. You, can, uh, you can't see anything from this far out, but I can see the Capitol, Reagan National. I mean, this is cool to be able to see like this. Keep slowing. We are below 10,000 now. We'll set our 240 on our speed. Continue slowing. Passengers get a nice view here of the DC area. Obviously, landing at Dulles, we're west of the city, but my passenger needed to go to Dulles. So that's where we're going. 32 miles out, 8,300 feet. Shallow water to sun rate slightly. Just continue slowing. Landing gear. Use our speed Landing brakes gear. here. Look at you Landing can actually gear. see the speed brakes deployed. Landing gear. Landing gear. There they go. That helps slow the plane nicely. Slowing. Set two one zero. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Speed brakes will help bring the throttle up. 
Normally you don't use speed brakes to, quote, bring the throttle up, but in this sim I have to do that to get rid of that landing gear alarm, which they kept, kept promising to address, but they haven't. In my judgment, you shouldn't have a landing gear alarm unless you're, I don't know, maybe they could link it to being below a certain altitude or something like that. I don't know. I don't claim to be an expert. Go ahead and switch our uh, bearing one over to nav one. We should have ILS data at this point. We do. India Oscar Sierra Zulu, IOSZ, is receiving. And you see other planes are on final to runways one left, one C, and one right. There's actually, I wish I could zoom in a little bit more. One, two, three. There's three airplanes on final to three different runways, all north facing. That's pretty cool at this very moment. We'll be there soon. Giving us about 11 minutes to wheels down. It's always a little bit of a danger. Um, not danger, but a little bit of a frustration in, a, in landing at big, big, big airports. I like it because they're well equipped. ILS frequencies up the yin yang and good approach plates so on and so forth, but there's also a lot of people there flying into them. And Dulles is not a tiny airport. I've landed there many times. Look at all the planes. I've never seen this many. These guys are going to the DCA, into Reagan. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine planes. God, please don't see I have a... Uh, Go around in my future. So when we get to, we're going this way. We're in the middle of our, U, getting ready to make our right U-turn to head north. When we get about to the middle of the arc here. I'll switch over to Nav One on the end Nav Source, and then I'll press the APPR button, uh, and then we'll uh, intercept the localizer. There's that right turn. Local time in DC right now, 3:55 p.m. Zulu time. Okay, so just as I said, we're being ordered to descend to the descend next altitude at, at Pepper. Remember at Pepper we're supposed to be at 3,900 feet? The sim's very conservative when it comes to this. I mean, I don't have to be at 5,000 feet until I get to Lucy. Lucy is still uh, 2.9 nautical miles away, 50 seconds. Here's us. Here's Lucy. Here's Pepper. But we can go ahead and begin our descent to 3,900. That's no problem. Just going to do a 700 foot per minute descent rate. Very conservative. Continue slowing. Set 185. Do a notch of flaps. See the flaps? One notch. Really a beautiful day in D.C. Wow. Okay, we're coming up on the, uh, almost to the top of this arc. Right here, we'll start doing our uh, approach work. Activate our landing lights at this point. It's been a good flight. I've been itching for a nice, normal, uneventful flight. It's been a while. There's, a, there's been a lot of drama in some of my flights lately. There's a lot of planes going into Dulles today, though, so that could easily add an element of drama. I hate to say it. I'm going to shallow out our descent rate, make it even more conservative, because we're 39 seconds from Lucy, and we need to be at 5,000 feet at Lucy, and we're already at 4,100 feet. And then at Pepper, right there, I don't know if you can see it, P-E-P-R-R, -R, we want to be at 3,900 feet. So. Our altitude's great. Should have the airport in sight here in a moment. Just about to switch over. Airspeed's good. 187. Oh, 
ice. Still got some icing, but we got our anti-icing equipment on, so we're fine. Continuing to make that right turn, just as I mentioned. Looks good. Let's go ahead and uh, switch this over to NAV1. Switch this over to EPPR. Showing us below the glide slope, just as we would expect and want to be. We're at 3,900 feet right now. That's what I would expect. CDI looks good. There it is. Got him in sight, set down a three Bravo whiskey. Rickyard tree five, one six climb, and maintain three thousand feet. Hey, we're just holding thirty nine hundred right now as we close in on pepper. Cessna tree Bravo whiskey have the generic in sight. Showing us twenty two seconds from Lucy. Obviously the estimates on how far you are from something turn and depend on your speed. This is cool. If this guy's not going into 01C, if he's going into 01 left, then we're going to have a parallel approach. Which, you know, I hate to get optimistic and think that it might actually, everything might actually work. But that'd be cool if that happens. This guy, look at this guy. This is a fellow simmer. This is not a real-time airline. That's cool. Okay, we're just about to turn final. There's the there's the airport. There's a million airplanes. My God, it looks like a Christmas tree with all these anti-collision lights. Zero one left. Zero one C. I presume. Zero one right over here. There it is. So here's where we're landing, right on that runway. Okay, we look good. Things look good. Expect this white GS to turn green as this green diamond, as you see it's starting to sink down here. See how it's moving? Indicating that we're approaching the glide slope. About five minutes now from wheels down. Holy shit. <laughs> Did you see that? Uh, that was great. Thanks for the heads up, honey. <laughs> oh, Jesus. This is dipping, continuing to dip. We're sliding into that glide slope. This should turn any second. Winds are shifting. Really? Wow. Come on. Now. Do it now. Oh boy, that's not good. That's not good. There we go. Sorry, I had to coax it there, you see. But we got it. Okay, I, I definitely sense a... Uh, go around in our future just because look at this look at this i mean can i do i need to say anything else you guys one sixty okay let's go ahead and look outside do our landing gear always our favorite part do another notch of flaps Nice. The only concern I have here is that we're not not lined up with runway one center. We are not lined up with runway one seven for whatever reason. 
So we're going to go ahead and do this by ourselves again, friends. And I don't know. I, it's we're not on one. We're not lined up for one C. I mean, I, I don't know why, but we're not. Let's go ahead and disconnect the auto throttle. There's planes everywhere. Hmm. All right. Well, we, we work. What? I, I don't know if there's an issue with that. With the ILS, do full flaps. Clear to land. One center. Number two. Or number two. So, as I suspect, uh, there's planes everywhere. And <laughs> here comes the go-arounds. I'm not doing a go-around, just to let you know. We'll just land. There's an airplane right in front of us. I don't know if you can see him. I can see him. I'm doing 153 knots. I can't really slow down any more than this. I'm still following the glide slope information. I'm just kind of curious why it's almost like hmm. oh my god there's planes everywhere I can't I'm, I'm certain that I uh, that I entered the correct ILS frequency so what's gonna happen here I'll just give you a heads up that plane in front of us is gonna land they're not gonna get off the runway in time we're gonna be told to go around and I'm gonna summarily ignore that and land anyway This is what you get when you uh, land at crazy, busy airports. But so far, the approach has gone fine, other than I'm kind of curious why the ILS didn't have us lined up. No, there's a possibility that... Oh boy, you know what just occurred to me? Hmm. Let's find out. We're going to find out here in about two seconds. see what this run <laughs> clear ILS runway one center approach flex jet tree eight zero one two one decimal six two five Wisconsin tree seven got whites on the poppies but that's okay runway United one nine or nine one C interesting so he's not gonna exit even though go around told you yeah I'm not going around get off the runway Oh my god, could you take any longer? I just sodomized that airplane. Alright. That's alright. So a few mysteries on that one. Few mysteries on that one. Why did the ILS never line up? Let's just check something real quick, okay? Just for just for shits and giggles, I want to just reconfirm that I had the right ILS frequency programmed in for one way one C. I know I did, but let's just check anyway. Zero one C. This I'm looking at the FAA approach plate. ILS frequency for 1C is 111.3. Look. What? 111.3 on NAV1. So why the ILS never lined up is, is, is not clear to me. But we're off the runway. We landed safely and well, even though we kind of had a special moment with that United that didn't get off the runway fast enough. Let's go ahead and go outside. Let's bring those spoilers in. And let's go ahead and bring our flaps in. You know, I have to tell you, this kind of busy airspace is challenging for people. 
By that I mean for actual living human air traffic controllers. So to have to have uh, the AI have to deal with all that, it's a lot to ask, truly. Well, the good news is we don't have to t cross any runways. Taxi to General Aviation parking via taxiway Yankee 4 Yankee Yankee 2. Stop our timer. Four hours, ten minutes. And I think we probably landed about three minutes ago, roughly, so. Met our 4 p.m. arrival time. Anyway, I know it's kind of humorous to... Uh, To, let, to be told to go around and land anyway, but I'm just... Uh, there's no reason on Earth to think that it would have been any different the second time around. I mean, it's a busy time of day. It's 4 o'clock in East... East four, 1600 hours, 4 p.m. In, in Washington, D.C. On a Sunday, there's just a lot of planes in the area, and I'm not going to go around. I'm just not going to... Especially when I know when I know that nothing will happen to my plane if I don't. So we kind of dodged that plane. They, did, they almost, God bless them, whoever they were, if it was a uh, actual airliner or a, uh, a fellow simmer, they almost got off the runway in time. I don't know why it takes so long for some some people to exit the runway, but oh well. All right, so we're gonna continue here on our quick short little journey to parking after our transcontinental flight to Washington DC and luckily it's a pretty straightforward uh, taxi job there's planes everywhere I've never seen airspace this busy look at this guy Yeah, there's an argument to be made for landing at smaller airports. As I said, you know, the nice part about landing at big airports is, I, is they're, they're well equipped. They've got ILS frequencies, although today the ILS frequency for a 01 center did not work. Uh, I'll rewatch the video later, but we were not lined up. We were not lined up, period, end of story. And I did, I did everything right in terms of handling the approach and the entering the correct ILS frequency and so forth. So I occasionally have to remind myself that this is a, a, a game, a piece of software that's still young. You know, it was only released in August. It's what, five months old? So there's still a lot of issues that are getting worked out. I mean, every two weeks they release some gigantic patch. So, there's plenty to fix, not the least of which includes an erroneous ILS frequency for 01C at Dulles. Make a note of that. When I come back to Dulles, don't land at 01C. Try a different, uh, try a different, uh, All right, at least parking looks quiet. I don't know if we'll get any help today for parking, but... Hope springs eternal. At least they're not planting us in the midst of uh, a bunch of little Cessna 152s or something. All right, good. Oh, is it straight in? Come on, give me straight in. I deserve it. I doubt it. I don't know, let's see. It is straight in. Fantastic.
Nice. All right. Okay. Jesus Christ. Parking brake. Uh, kill that right engine. Get our lights off. Oh, I have to be pressurized. Look outside. Welcome to Dulles. The local time now is 4.13. I don't know where I'm going to stay tonight. Who can say? But our girl, 343 Bravo Whiskey, is doing great and has delivered us yet again after a long flight. So, let's go ahead and drop to our logbook screen by closing the, or shutting off the left engine. Make sure to turn off our pitot heat. Here we go. That's it. Four hours, seven minutes, 56 seconds from Spokane to Dulles. Flew across the northern part of the U.S., across the uh, northern plains, the Great Lakes, and then turned south over Pennsylvania. It's a good flight. Enjoyed it. The crowded airspace and listening to poor, poor AI ATC try to juggle all these planes. And you know what? I actually don't fault the sim. I don't fault the sim because real ATC couldn't handle you know, a bunch of people all just deciding to fly to Dallas for the hell of it. I mean, it makes total sense to me. The, the lesson, though, I suppose to be learned from it is that large airports probably should be avoided uh, at busy times of the day or on busy days, weekend days, when people, you know, guys, people, simmers, are, play, are flying. Uh, it's a Sunday afternoon. You know what I mean? People are relaxing in the middle of a pandemic. Why not? Let's go fly to Dulles. Well, that's fine and dandy, except in real life, of course, that would and wouldn't and couldn't happen. So ATC isn't confronted with a scenario or a situation like this. And then to dump something like this on the ATC, on the AI, it's not equipped to handle it. Nobody could handle it. So we landed and kind of clipped uh, another aircraft that almost, I mean, God, if we'd only had 10 extra seconds, he probably would have been off the runway. But suspension of disbelief, right? So anyway, welcome to Dulles, and we'll see where we head next. But this was a good, a good flight today, and I enjoyed it. I hope you have a good day.